don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. Just to be standing in this position right now, saying, what thus saith the Lord? And I'm just glad I give honor to God and to Pastor and to Lady Hobson and to Superintendent Robinson and Lady Robinson and to all of the fellow laborers in the gospel and to all the missionaries, all the saints and friends. Yes. Amen. I just thank God for just being here, being saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. Tonight, I'm, I'm going to talk to you, hopefully, a little briefly. I, I, I got a time limit, but, but we're in good time right now. So if you will, with me, turn to the Gospel of Matthew, the 25th chapter of Matthew, the 25th chapter of Matthew. And while you're getting that, I, there's a little song I have been just been in my spirit all week. Come on, now, don't, don't y'all get too excited. I'm going to just, just do a little bit. All right. Just a little bit. But there was this song that, that they used to sing in the church a long time ago. And uh, and I hadn't heard it for a while, so it's been in my spirit all week. And it, and it says, uh, I found a friend who is all to me. His truth. As 
we hurry toward the new year, there's a lot of us who take for granted that because we're here right now, that we're going to make it on into 2016. But that's not necessarily so because uh, <laughs> the, the hour is not promised to us. Not one minute is promised to you. So you can still be this close and not make it. There's some people tonight that are not going to make it to 2016. So while you're waiting for 2016 to come in, I, I implore you to trim your lamps. Get your lamps ready. Uh, because it's on its way. And you need to be ready at all times. There's a couple of things about, 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 about these verses that I need to tell you, first of all. And that is that this is a parable. And I know that those of you who have been in the church a long time understand what a parable is. But, but for the sake of those who may not know, let me just say this. That, that Jesus talked in parables for a couple of good reasons. Uh -huh. One is, I, I remember that the disciples went to the master and said, look, master, why, why do you talk normally to us, but then you talk to them in parables? Uh -huh. All right. He said, because it's given to you, it's granted for you because of who you are. To know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But for them, it's not granted. Yeah, they're not supposed to know what the secrets hold. So, so that tells me that, that Jesus wanted us to, to really dig in the scriptures to find out. Oh, come on, somebody. See, sometimes you got to dig for what you want to know. And if everything came easy to you, it wouldn't be that serious. So he wants us to dig in the scriptures to find the truth. So that's why he used parables to talk to those who were not in the household of faith. And in these scriptures, we find ten virgins. Now, now let me make sure you understand that, that all of them were virgins. I'm trying to say something right there. Yeah, there, there, there was ten of them. But all of them were virgins. Just like we got a lot of Christians. Okay, y'all gonna have to follow with me now. Yeah. You can pray if you want to, but uh, but I'm gonna preach it anyway. Uh, so so let me just say this: that there are a lot of Christians, some are wise. Some some are foolish. And the, and the Bible talks about the fact that these five wise they carried their lamps, which were already burning, and then they carried extra oil. Yeah, that means that they were they were trying to make sure that they were always going to be ready, just in case the bridegroom took a little while coming. But but those that were foolish, they carried their lamps which were burning, but they didn't take extra oil. You see, they may have had in their minds that uh, well he's going to come pretty quick because well let me let me back up just a little bit. Let me let me tell you what they did as Jews. They would take these virgins with these lamps, and whenever the bridegroom got ready to come, he would normally start at his house. And they would have a party at his house first, and then he would go to the bridegroom, to her house. And by the time he got to her house, it would be dark. So they didn't have any street lamps. So those who were helping the bridegroom, they would go outside with the lamps and light up the way. Well, I, wish, I wish somebody knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They would light up the way for the bridegroom so that when he was on his way, he could see which way he was going. And then he would pick up the bridegroom and then they would uh, pick up his bride and then they would head on back to his place. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So here we are and we have five wise and five foolish. And, 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 and while they were waiting on the bridegroom, they slept and they slumbered. As they slept and slumbered, their, their lamps were steady burning. Yeah, yeah. But along about midnight, there was a cry made. Yeah. The bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Now that doesn't mean he was there. It meant he was on his way. And we know he's on his way. So you need to get ready and go out and stand guard so that he can see his way in. Well, they began to get up and trim their lamps again. And that's when the foolish found out they didn't have any oil. 
But I came to tell you this evening, Calvary, that you're not out of time just yet. There's still time for you to make it in. There's still time for you to get your oil. There's still time for you to make it back. Just in time. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not 2016 yet, but, but it's coming. But I want you to know that you can still make it just in time. I know a God that will accept you right now. No matter where you came from, no matter what you've done, no matter what you look like, no matter who don't like you, you can still make it in time. Out of all, out of touch and out of time. I, I need you to know that Jesus doesn't care where you've been. He don't care how long you had to go to try to find that oil. But he'll give you some oil if you just ask him. He'll give you the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. But I'm going to send you another comfort, which is the Holy Ghost. And he shall lead you to God and to all truth. And he will tell you all the things that I told you before. You don't have to worry about it. He got some oil for you. So you're looking for oil in all the wrong places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody looking for love in the wrong place, but you're looking for oil in all the wrong places. What you need to be doing is coming down to the altar and asking the Lord of the harvest for some oil. Come on, somebody. I need you to know tonight that it's just in time. Just as we rush toward 12 o'clock tonight, you can be just in time. You can be just in time. Hallelujah. I'm just about done. But I need you to understand tonight. I don't want you, I don't want you to get so excited you missed the message. That you still, you still got time. You still got time. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how long you've been in the church. Yeah, you sitting up in here, been in here a long time, and running out of oil. Yeah, your, your flame just as slickery as it. Yeah, let me tell you something. When your flame starts to flicker, that means that means you're running out of oil. That, and you know how you know when you're running out of oil? When your patience ain't like it used to be. Yeah. You run out of oil when your love ain't like it used to be. You run out of oil when your prayer ain't like it used to be. You run out of oil when you don't like your pastor. I don't want to do what he said to you. That's when you're running out of oil. You might think you got enough to left in your lantern, but your light is beginning to flicker. And don't be deceived. Everybody around you can see it. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself. Yeah, you better look at your light. Yeah, the Bible says that, that we're supposed to be a light set on a hill that cannot be hid. But, but even if you're a long way off, you can see a light when it's flickering. So I see something down there, but it's, but it's it, it, it come in and it go out. It come in and it, yeah, it come in and it go out. It come in and it, I, I, I wish you'd get some oil so your light can be seen from a long way off. Yeah. yeah, but but you're not out of time yet. So I need you to understand that even though your light is flickering, yeah. you can get filled up again. That's right. Yeah, you can get some more oil. I can't give you none of mine because I need all mine. But, uh, <laughs> but the Lord will give you some more. Yeah, you can fill it up tonight. That's what these services are for. When you come down the aisle, you can get your land filled right here at the altar. And then when you get to your house, if you get your oil right, you can get some refills even at your house. Yeah, you don't have to come to the church to get filled. Did y'all did y'all did y'all know that? Okay, all right. I, I just check. I just check. You see, sometimes we we give misinformation. We, we think the only place you can get filled with the Holy Ghost is at the church. Yeah, no. It's a good place. It's a good place to get filled. Uh, we, we do that all the time right up here. But, but I just need you to know that you can get filled at the house. All you got to do is ask. And, and, and you in time. He, he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you. Yeah, yes, he will. Now, what I want y'all to do is I want you to stand to your feet. We got about 20 minutes until the new year comes in. I want you to stand to your feet. Now, listen. 